Hi there, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Heather and I run a small handmade business called Lemon Tree Corner where I make purses and bags and project bags for makers like you. And welcome back to those of you who've been here before. We hopefully have a fun filled week this week. Uh, the last week was college day. Go Vikings, Long Beach City College. I even did my nails for the occasion. <laughs> um, I'm loving these stick-on nails, the Ohora Company. Um, I'm really loving them. I had originally bought some knowing that I was going to start a YouTube channel. And I really haven't even worn them in my YouTube channel this whole year. So I'm going to make an effort to pretty myself up. <laughs> I'm not really a girly girl. I only put on makeup for you guys. So uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of a lot for me to have nails. I've already chipped it. I just did these. And I've already chipped a piece off the nail. So that's that's how it goes for me, which is why I don't usually do that. We have a fun week. It's the first week back at school for the fall semester. So a lot of busyness going on. Deciding, do I open my door? Am I wearing my mask all the time? Ah, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I do have a colonoscopy coming up. Ugh. So first one, and I don't want to lose the time slot because they're trying to get me in. They're like, no pun intended, very backed up in the colonoscopy world because everybody put it off during COVID and now everybody wants to schedule an appointment. So I was lucky enough to get an appointment, so I feel like I just need to be super vigilant and keep wearing my mask at work and doing all of those things because the last thing I want, first of all, is to get COVID in the first few weeks of school when I'm very needed, uh, but also to get COVID and not be able to do this appointment. So we're going to be extra cautious and keep wearing the mask. Um, and other than that, just enjoying sewing all these pieces together. So we've got our rows are coming along for the Hawaiian quilts and still need to sew the rest of those rows together. We've got the Moroccan blanket we're going to continue working on. I have not made any more of those squares for the corner, so that's my goal this week. And we got the backing fabric. I'm going to do an unboxing with you, but I want to show you it now too. So, oh, it's this beautiful, precious fabric with the turtles. I don't have any turtles in these. It's all florals for these. So I was thinking, what's the other thing that I love that I would love to have for the complete back? So I'm going to go with the turtles, uh, which means we need to prep. We need to wash and prep and probably go into work on a weekend so I can take over the whole conference table with the fabric to cut it apart correctly and piece that together and all that fun stuff. Now that doesn't have to be completed this week, but I would like to get the front, all the strips sewn and make some sort of progress on that because we're right around the corner. We're gonna start Christmas in September. I don't know, it feels too close now. Christmas in October. So we're gonna start on that. And I have all the felt and everything for the ornaments and the advent calendar we're going to make. But I do need to get some fabric to be the tree in the back of the advent calendar. And also the fabric that we're putting all of this on, it's going to be hanging from a, a rope and a dowel. So, it, so those kind of pieces I need to do, I don't need to have that set when I start the ornaments because obviously the ornaments are going to take a while to make. Uh, and I think I have the, the fill, I think I have the fill for the ornaments. Some of them are going to be a little puffy. Um, but so I'll need to take a trip to Joanne's and pick out some subtle green background fabric that I can use for the tree. And I think that comes in like three tiers. But I'll go over all of this. I'll share with you uh, the designs that I found on Etsy and, and link those for you. So if you want to play along. Uh, you could download them and make an advent calendar too. So uh, ready to get going here and just was wondering what's your favorite time of year? I know my favorite time of year is fall. Uh, Christmas time comes in a close second just because my parents were in the church choir and it was always like a very cheerful time in our house 
and also cozy because I love cozying up under a blanket with a cup of tea, you know, a mug of hot chocolate. So I just like that cozy time. Uh, grew up in Southern California, so that's about as cold as it gets is in December and January. But really fall, uh, I love fall. It's just the best autumn for all of you normal people. We call it fall. <laughs> uh, but I love cozying up. I love the pumpkins and apples and the harvest and all of that and the dried corn husks and the sound of crunchy leaves underfoot. Uh, I went to school up in Northern California at Sonoma State, go Sonoma State, and uh, that was the first time I had really experienced seasons growing up in Southern California. You don't really have a lot of seasons. It's either sunny or overcast. Uh, so it was nice to be in Northern California and it would rain and it would smell like rain and you would go crunch crunch as you walked across campus with all those drying leaves and so that really instilled a love of autumn for me and just celebrating it. My birthday's in October and Halloween is in October and just love all that witchy goodness. So uh, that's my favorite time. But let me know what yours is. I know a lot of people love spring. A lot of people who are from colder climates really love summer because it's their one chance to really get some sun and warmth. And if you have a garden, I'm sure you love spring as well. Or maybe you like autumn because of the harvest of your garden as well. So drop it in the comments down below. Let's see who likes what seasons. See what kind of group we have here. <laughs> Okay, and as always, if you like my video, please hit the like button. If you've watched more than one and you've come back for more, I would love it if you would subscribe. Our subscribers have just like doubled in the last few weeks, so it's just amazing to see that. I love hitting the little button and seeing bing, like there's a few new subscribers and it really makes my day. So uh, thank you very much to those of you who have subscribed. And anytime you do anything with the channel, liking, subscribing, commenting, uh, it tells the all-knowing YouTube algorithm that I'm somebody that people are enjoying. And it suggests my videos to people who watch the same type of videos that you do. So we can grow this channel together. So thanks so much for coming. And let's get right into it. It's not about the next two years. It's about the next 20. It allows me Champions. You. Speaking of champions, please help me welcome the four-time national champion, the Long Beach cheerleading team.
so not quite an unboxing because I already opened the package. I couldn't wait for you. <laughs> but here we have the backing fabric. Now I ordered eight and a half yards of this. Um, so hopefully that's enough. If I was smart, I would have actually, you know, like gridded out what I needed and done it on a on a graphic so that I could see it because apparently I'm a much better visual person than just doing numbers in my head. But it's very pretty. It's got kind of this alternating deep blue and teal motif going on with the with the turtles. I don't know what thread to use. I mean, I would use a white thread to quilt this whole thing if I were just going by the front because that's going to go best with the most colors. But I really like this teal color in here, or maybe even the blue, just to tie it in so that the back doesn't look super white because I do have my current bedspread looks like that where it's a, oh, actually my current couch throw looks like that. It's quilted and the back is a dark, actually let me get it. So my current couch throw is like this where it's got a dark, uh, a dark background on the back and kind of a white cream taupe thread which is great for the front. It blends in very nicely but uh, really stands out on the back so that's kind of what I would like to avoid. So I would like to be able to, I don't know why I just did that, I just put something with dog hair on top of the fabric. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this together as a Mobius strip um, because apparently it doesn't get as tangled in the washer and dryer that way. And then I'm going to pre-shrink it. I'm going to put it in the washer, pre-shrink it. Uh, the nice thing is, is that the salvage edge here just looks like regular fabric. So no big ribbed salvage edge to worry about. So that's good because I might need every inch of this I can get. I did check that it's 44 inch fabric before I ordered it though. So at least, at least I did that. I mean, most of them are, but I did double check that. It says this is eight, eight and a half yards, but it doesn't quite look like eight and a half yards but I'm sure that it is. It was also on sale, so that's good. Uh, so I'll get this washed and ironed. I don't know how I'm gonna iron it. Hmm, that's gonna be tricky. I don't know how I'm gonna iron it without getting dog hair all over it from the floor. But our house is being cleaned next week, so maybe I will wait until after that. And the floor has been recently cleaned, and then I will be able to do it with less dog hair. And as far as laying it out to cut it, I might have to take it to work on a weekend and use a big table at work to get it all cut out correctly. I think I'm still going to grid it out on the computer first just to make sure that I didn't totally mess up before I cut the fabric. Uh, that way if I need to order more, it's a smaller piece that I'll need to order. So, yeah. Yay! I'm excited. Now I just have to sew the rest of the thing together.
days of eternity, seven days in another country. Every cell screams, stay right here, and my legs, they freeze us in fear. And I wanted to show you what we did in the scrapbook so far. If I can open this without running into things. And I don't know if they're going to be super shiny pages or not. So I forgot that the album starts with a single page. So I kind of had to change my layout a little bit. But um, I was thinking having a little journal box here or another little... Um, collage of words if I can find one I think I had another one to go and then just the whole idea of everything being closed you know wave to me from six feet away I'm Irish because we went into lockdown right before St. Patrick's Day um, need to fill this out and then this is just going to be a huge journaling box so um, I'm going to type up a whole thing because my handwriting isn't great and then that way you'll be able to read it um, and then I have a picture of Times Square empty so I'm going to talk about you know even Broadway was shut down and New York looking empty and then also went into current events of the day that were happening with the protests um, of George Floyd's murder and all of that kind of thing and I think I was going to add more photos here. I can't remember what I was going to do there. But just kind of giving a history of what's going on. Wearing masks, washing hands, all of that kind of thing. And the backlash against the masks. And then we had the empty grocery stores. My sister took these photos for me because I obviously wasn't going anywhere. Um, <clears throat> I see empty grocery stores. And I said, I'm grateful for Instacart, drive through and meal plans. So I talked about the panic buying and that we were thrilled when the grocery stores started doing deliveries. We really relied on that a lot. So here's all of our deliveries, our Instacart stuff. And then I really love this permission slip to do nothing, to do something, to be unproductive, to do what makes you feel good or comfortable or calm or normal or safe or okay to get through this in a way that works for you. So I really took that to heart. Um, 
I actually <laughs> enjoyed it a lot. I am an introvert, so I feel like I've been in training for this my whole life. This is exactly up my alley to stay home and not go anywhere. I mean, obviously I missed people and conversations, but it was definitely, I think, easier for me than anybody um, who's an extrovert to stay home and just do my own thing and be a homebody. Um, obviously there's anxiety related to the whole pandemic going on, but I feel like I was okay with the staying home part. And I love this parenting during coronavirus shutdown. <laughs> day one, you're Mary Poppins. Day three, you're the lady from Annie. <laughs> so I love that. Uh, and then I was just going to add some more journaling here about what's going on. And then up to this point, I haven't had any pictures of me. Well, a few pictures. But so here's the start of some actual photos things that I was doing, hanging out with the dogs, that kind of thing. Um, new pastime was getting Amazon deliveries, <laughs> ordering everything through Amazon, and then just getting so delirious in your house that we had, we had named this water bottle Pops because it makes a popping noise all the time. Out of nowhere, just randomly out of nowhere, I'm not prepared for it. it, drives me crazy. And my husband had put a hat on it when he came in from watering the plants. And it really did look like a character now as Pops. <laughs> so I put that down. And then talked about um, working from home. So this was my home office, which is pretty much set up like it was still. And my coworkers, the two dogs, not doing much. Getting to enjoy my tea at home. That was fun and just grateful for home projects. You know, we uh, redid the bedroom. We got the headboard and put the bamboo up. I had already painted the room a few years ago, <clears throat> but kind of put some more touches in there, which was nice and just prettying up my, my um, kitchen with the Pioneer Woman stuff from Walmart. And we got this cool bird feeder that I had seen on somebody's YouTube channel and put it in the kitchen window so we could observe the birdies in the feeder. And then here's Lucy looking at something out the window. And then here's um, our cabaret for the choir got canceled. So I'm going to take a picture of me in the outfit. I was going to do a parody. Um, Weird Al's parody of Smells Like Teen Spirit and I had the Weird Al wig and the Nirvana t-shirt and like all this stuff so I'm gonna have to get that out of storage and take a picture of me in that outfit and then the choir uniforms for the fall and then we lost Robin so it it was um, after the pandemic started she was already sick but you know she wasn't able to do this performance that got canceled anyway but uh, the last rehearsal she was at I gave her a big hug but really wish that wish that I had known it was the last time I was gonna see her um, wasn't able to see her before she passed away so that was really sad and having St. Patrick's Day at home and this was cute too I just love all the little memes that came out it says women aged 30 to 59 are mostly most likely to carry coronavirus without symptoms. Best course of action is to quarantine them away from men and children. The local spas and wineries are the designated local quarantine centers. Send women immediately. <laughs> and then this is when I created the design wall that you've all seen behind me in the videos. And then also all the masks, the mask making craze, um, taking all my old fabric. I'm going to line up more masks here because I went through several design iterations of the masks. And then I actually wound up just buying the professional ones that I saw online, which were way nicer and had the nose uh, wire and everything already in it. And then here's me discovering all my YouTubers. <laughs> and getting interested in their lives and watching them. 
This is Kate from The Last Homely House. Um, she's the uh, the English grandma I was telling you about that had the quilting series with her daughter and uh, daughter-in-law. And she's got several cats. And whenever I have the channel on, and one of the cats is in the shot, Oreo, my Springer Spaniel, jumps off the couch and is looking for the cat as it goes behind the TV. <laughs> and I thought this was cute, getting crabby. So this is some of the, I printed out a lot of beach photos and I do not need to include that many beach photos. So I've got two spreads here and I'll probably add another spread in later in the book, but I think I'm going to not worry about the rest. The good thing is, is the photos were 50% off. So even though I printed a bunch of photos that I'm probably not going to include in here because it's, it's already a pretty big album at this point, at least I'll. At least I'll feel like I'm not completely wasting money by not using those photos. And then, I love this, my house by the end of self-isolation, I think my old boss sent me that. That's totally hilarious. So that's kind of how I felt organizing everything and doing all the crafts and making all the bags, starting my English paper piecing and doing all of that. can't believe I did a whole spread on the English paper piecing. That takes up a lot of room. And then the family craft zooms with my mom and my sister. And doing all the blankets, all the crocheting. And then we had our, we had uh, made brownies and had those as our anniversary. And I love <laughs> your quill hibernate. It's really what it felt like. So we got the snacks stacked up and my husband snacking the pandemic away. Me also, but he was nice enough to take a picture. And then all the games that we tried playing. I still have to order the Scrabble. I really want like the super deluxe old fashioned Scrabble set that has the space between the, that has the raised bits between the tiles. Um, but that one's pretty expensive. I might just go for the regular. Scrabble and have all that that we played and then food entertainment just going out for our car picnics and pretty much still doing that at this point and then growing all the avocado seeds I've got two plants left in the backyard it's been a really hot summer so they are not very happy right now but I do have two that are still alive and then just us hanging out in the backyard uh, we put a screen up to keep the mosquitoes out. And that's as far as I got. So that was fun. I have another scrapbook day planned with my sister for next month. So we can keep this train running. Since I have everything picked out and it's all ready to go, I might as well just keep working on it. So I will show you progress as we get it. Okay, friends. So that's the end for this week. It's been a really exhausting week. Uh, first week of school. It was great to see everybody back on campus and all the students around. Um, I would say we're probably at 70-30 now. 70% 70 of our classes are in person and 30 are still online. Online is just very popular. Some students really do well in that environment and they appreciate having the flexibility with their schedule, not having to come to campus, not having to sit in a traditional classroom. And a lot of our instructors like it because a lot of our instructors work at like three or four different community colleges and they used to have to drive around all over the South Bay, you know, trying to uh, get to school, park, can you imagine, three or four different parking permits. Um, carrying a rolly cart around with them everywhere of all their handouts and copies. So they really appreciate having online classes as well. That they can work at three or four different colleges uh, throughout the week from home. So that's really handy. So uh, this week we worked on the, on the quilt. I got the backing fabric. I plotted it all out. I can get it here. I plotted it all out and I do have enough fabric. 
So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take that long eight and a half yards of fabric. Uh, this would be selvage to selvage. So that's 44 inches. And we're going to cut three long strips of this. Sew it together on one of the selvage edges. And what was I going to say? And then I was debating whether or not we should cut off of both of these edges. But I figured if I use all 44, 44, and 18, then I get a nice strip here of fabric that I can use for bags. So that's a good um, 26 inch by, what is that, 94 inches. That's a really good piece of fabric that I can use for bags. So I'm going to do it that way. And if any of you are wondering what I was talking about when I said a thread bunny, this is what they look like. So you basically take, let's see if I, that can focus there. You basically take a piece of spare fabric, little, little chunks of fabric, and what you do is you run them through the machine first. So they catch the beginning of the thread and then you, you uh, have your piece of fabric going afterwards and then you either have another bunny, you know, you keep rotating, rotating, rotating. Uh, normally you would chain piece multiple uh, rows to, together at a time so that you'd be sticking in row one, row two, row three, row four. The way I have this laid out with all these squares, I just figured that's going to be too confusing. I'm going to get them all mixed up. So we're going with the thread bunnies, which has been really good. The only problem is obviously you're wasting all of this thread. But it's better because it doesn't get all uh, bunched up. Like when you start sewing something, that first that first little chunk gets bunched up and bunched up in there. So trying to avoid that as much as possible. And the other thing we got done this week, or tried to get done, is the Moroccan blanket squares. So what I did is I decided to block those on my other blocking board. So here we have all of our squares and three squares per corner. So I did the first corner, still need to do the others, but this is what it looks like. So they had us do this kind of ridge, uh, crocheting those all together. And then at first I had, I had used the whole thing but realized, oh, I need to just go in the back post so that this matches this. So that's what I did there. They don't quite match up with this color work. Um, she just said to fudge it. <laughs> so we're going to be pulling and blocking this quite a bit, I think, to get it to look the way we want it to look. But so there's one corner done. And then I think uh, the next kit has two more border rows before we get to all the little squares. So I'm very proud of that. One thing one thing I just had to remind myself of this week was just taking it slow. I have to watch the video first. I try and do it along with the video. Um, my tablet isn't great. So whenever I try and go a little bit back with my finger I wind up going like three steps back, so that's frustrating, and I think I'm just trying to like not pause the video. I'm trying to not have to go back and rewatch something, but that's kind of a pipe dream because I'm always going to have to go back and rewatch stuff. So if I watch her do it first, I see how she lines it up, uh, then I can just go back a little bit and do it with her the second time through. Uh, that's obviously going to work a lot better. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Um, oh, and I started working on the Moments of Zen videos. So I am started with the Oregon Coast, so keep keep your eye out for those. Those will be coming shortly, if not already posted. Uh, so I will have Oregon Coast videos. They're all going to be like under 10 minutes with either the actual sound of the waves or if it was too windy. You know, put some music, some nice music behind it that you can enjoy. And they'll just be little short videos that if you just need a moment to breathe, 
you can watch those. Uh, I'll make a whole playlist of them. So we've got Oregon Coast. I think it has some um, waterfalls, drives, that kind of thing. And then from our last trip in Kauai, I'll also do Kauai beaches. And I don't think I got any good drives, but just Kauai vibes other places. And the, oh, the cliff top, watching all the waves crash was really nice too. So I'll be sharing those with you. And I think that's it. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. It's getting really hot here in Southern California, as I'm sure every place else is as well. We have a heat wave coming. It's Labor Day weekend, so it's kind of nice after a, a really busy, uh, high energy first week of school to actually have Monday off and have a short week next week. So I'm looking forward to getting a lot of stuff done, including going to work on my day off <laughs> to cut all that fabric. Uh, I really need the big giant conference room table, so I'll take you along with me as I do that, and we'll cut the fabric and everything together. Um, yeah, I don't know how long that's going to take. I haven't even researched somebody to long arm quilt this thing, <laughs> so just trying to put it all together. And, um, you know, obviously when you make a handmade product, it's going to cost like five times more than if you had bought it in a store. And it's also going to take five times longer to make. So but it's just the joy of actually making it yourself and having an heirloom to hand down. So that's what we're after here on this channel. We're after making things ourselves and the experience of the making and the creativity of putting it all together. So I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Um, if you do have a holiday weekend, I hope you have a wonderful holiday weekend. Uh, maybe some ice cream is in your future, or gelato, or sorbet, or something nice to cool you off, or some, ooh, some really nice iced tea. That sounds good, too. <laughs> so stay cool, everybody, and I will see you next week. Love you. Bye.